Hello everyone, my name is Alicia Jackson, licensed professional counselor, and we are reviewing episode three of uh, Will Smith's The Best Shape of My Life, his docuseries on YouTube. It's very great, some powerful stuff. He's given us some really good things to use and um, talk about. So before we jump in, of course, uh, like, share, comment to join the conversation and of course subscribe to my channel come on people all right so let's dig in so episode three opens up with him texting i'm imagining his assistant or you know one of his people to say hey let's push this book back to next year and they're like we cannot do this we have poured too much money into this we cannot um and the episode continues to unfold so uh, there's voicemails you know we are five chapters behind we owe them five chapters and instead of writing will is riding a motorcycle talking to camels um he is He's pushing through. He's on target. It starts off with week 10. So he um, he's at 211. And he still has 10 chapters to finish. But he's at 211 pounds wise. He's um, And he's talking about, he starts his voiceovers talking about, as he's reading his book, um, disappearing into his imag his imagination and I thought this was um, great again for Will to let us in um, to his world and how he survived and so he talked about if you guys remember I think it's episode uh, the second episode he talked about being a feeling afraid most of his childhood so um, you know our brains don't like pain and so you know we find ways unique ways some people dissociate like they um they kind of drift off in, into a place that is not real um you know they and and sometimes it is like an imaginary world that they create for their um their own comfort and it sounds like that's where will went and has created for himself and he talked about in this imaginary world he gathers or has cultivated this delusional sense of confidence um and so paired with his work ethic he can do he can do anything and so you definitely see that through these episodes like will definitely feels he can do anything and so i don't think there's anything wrong with that necessarily right i think um it's just we have to really think about our capacity and our limitations like we are humans and so um i don't i think will feels like he's a he's he's more than human and and so the reality and the crash of that like no this is life i'm not i'm not um i want to say special right but i'm there's nothing that separates me from the normal human experience other than you know his access and his you know his work and his wealth that he's grown to to have at his dispo at his exposure or um you know to have it anytime that he needs it that yes he had that sets him apart of maybe you know you and i but other than that he's got to deal with reality he's got to deal with um, his feelings and which you see we see him running away from a lot um his therapist um used the term manic defense um when she was talking about using a crutch so he seduces himself with these lofty goals which is what he's doing right now with this lose 21 pounds in 21 weeks and finish a book at the same time he he is setting himself up for failure so he can prove him to himself that he can do anything and um it, that could be really dangerous especially to his psyche i think you know because will is so a uh, failure averse he is he does not like to sit in a mistake or 
um, not do well. That is a crush to him. Uh, setting himself up for failure to push himself to succeed like he's doing in this docuseries right now um, can be pretty dangerous. Um, and so we see that like he's he's still winning right on the weight loss side. He's lost 2.5 pounds. He's like braggadocious about that, but he still has 10 chapters to write. <laughs> and so uh, writing this book is about facing his feelings and facing... Um, um, putting the imaginary world of Will winning and Will making everything, you know, go go right in his world to really facing like the reality of his world. And his book and these chapters are his reality. And it seems like he's really fighting, facing that. His brother calls him out on that a little bit later. And we'll talk about that Um but so they start this step challenge with and I, and his trainer didn't. I'm like, why did you do this? But they start this challenge and Will goes over and said thirty four thousand steps in one day, which is like. But doing that, he he injures himself. He injures his hamstring, and so which results in him losing the step challenge. And you could see the face, the look on his face, like he was not pleased at all. But um, we're at a place where now they're like, hello, hello, Will, the book, the book. We need chapters. And so he's sitting down. He's um, talking about how feelings, you know, come before uh, survival for him. And his brother's like, hey, there's no way that you can, like, um, survive or, you know, in this world without feelings. And I feel like both of these things are true. Uh, he talked about like you know being chased by a pit bull and you're not thinking about your feelings at the time and honestly you're not right and at the same time um in a way of how his brother is taking the word survival it's like he's saying you can't there's no way you can live this experience called life and not embrace or or feel your feelings and it seems like will definitely is trying to run away from the feelings he abandons the book after having that discussion with his brother and goes to race in the sand dunes which results in his friend scotty getting stitches because the vehicle you know um turns over and so he talks about how he's overcompensated in the past uh, with buying these big extravagant things uh, for his 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 feelings of inadequacy, um, his loss and his betrayal that he's experienced in the past. And so he didn't realize that buying these things, having these nice things, doing these extravagant things was a way to soothe that pain. So it's kind of like reckless behavior, it sounds like, or um, his reckless spending or things like that. Um, kind of soothe the pain of feeling like ah, I lost the step challenge uh, I injured myself uh, um, I'm failing in this with reading with writing this book you know um, that he's trying to overcompensate by oh let's go do something that nobody else could do at, at the drop of a hat a hat in Dubai I'm gonna take all my my crew and we're gonna you know rate race in the sand dunes, you know, so it's like to kind of soothe that pain, right? And so what he talked about was the crash, though, the crash from reality, uh, the crash from the fantasy to reality, you know, the bigger the fantasy, the harder the, the crash. And um, it seems like we do it sometimes our brains are he talks about our very um, story like in narrative. Uh, like in, and so a part of his imagination is what it's telling him is that you know he is he is above these failures, right? He these failures don't affect him as long as he keeps winning, and then these feelings that he has don't don't affect him, don't apply to him, and and in reality, who he is and who he what his experiences have been to him, his feelings they affect him. There's no way. We do the same thing. And so taking a look for yourself, what do you feel like? What um, what narratives, what stories have you written for yourself in your mind? And that prevents you from seeing the, the reality, the pain of reality too. Because 
reality is, is, is it hurts. That's why our brain works so hard to protect ourselves from it. We have to say like, oh, that really did happen. And that was painful or that um, that is painful. It still hurts. And and being present with your feelings, giving yourself some some comfort and support and soothing yourself in a healthy way. So let's keep going forward uh, to see what Will Smith is going to teach us next. And um, of course, subscribe to the channel for our next um, episode that we have on episode four. Thanks so much. Take care. Peace.